Well, it seems that the Black Templars have a brand new High Marshal. Mr. Helbrecht seems to have crossed the Rubicon Primaris. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're taking a look at yet another new Black Templar miniature previews, with the update of another classic Space Marine miniature, High Marshal Helbrecht of the Black Templars. I must admit, I really quite like the model, it looks incredibly dramatic, and certainly well fitting for a chapter master equivalent of the Furious Crusading Space Knights. So as I'm sure plenty of people will be aware, High Marshal Helbrecht is the Supreme Commander of the Black Templars, traditionally clad in gold coloured power armour, and it does appear that that power armour has been updated to the Mark X Indomitus pattern, and Warhammer community confirm it in the article that he is indeed now a Primaris Space Marine. The model's basically reimagining a classic bit of Black Templar's art. I'll leave a link to the Warhammer community article where you can see it down in the video description. I'm guessing he's going to be released in the November release alongside the actual codex itself, as he isn't in the Black Templar launch box that we saw previewed the other day. And as Space Marine characters go, he is looking pretty suitably impressively big. With that big, almost diorama-like basis with the two servitors on it, I wouldn't be enormously surprised if they charged a little bit more for him than the standard Space Marine characters, Maybe something in the £25 to £30 mark at a complete guess. It's certainly very beefed up compared with the previous High Marshal miniature. Definitely a classic sculpt, but I think that one that was kind of showing its age compared with the more modern kits. I'm actually kind of struck with just how much they've stuck to the original miniature's design with this one. Aside from the different posing, it's largely just the same miniature reimagined as a bigger Primaris Marine. The sword of the High Marshals is looking bigger and more imposing than ever though. He's still carrying his lantern in his off hand and the vast majority of the details on the miniature are the same, all the way down to his symbol on his left shoulder, the free hand that they've done on his tabard, and the candles on the reliquary on his backpack. That combi melter has also acquired a name for itself, it's called Ferocity. I'm going to guess if they're bothering to name the combi melter, it's going to be a bit more beefed up in game, maybe a damage too on the bolter side of things, much like many of the mastercrafted bolters tend to be. Kind of interesting that he's in a bit more of a diorama-esque pose, rather than just the miniature itself, of course perched on a very big heroic rock, we can't just have our heroes standing on level ground after all. While I must admit I do quite like the pose and the level servitor attendance, I do sort of wonder whether a dead orc was really needed to be such a prominent part of the miniature. Might just potentially look a little bit off if you're fighting against other armies and greenskins are nowhere near the table. Still though, I guess if that really bothers you too much, you could easily swap that out to some more rocks or something, and he could just have impaled his sword in the ground in a very heroic way. Another couple of cool details is that he's picked up a pretty spectacular looking armoured helm now, that looks truly menacing, and very oldie world knight style, as opposed to fitting in with any of the more recent Primaris designs. Apparently he's also lost a hand fighting Imitech the Stormlord since he last had a miniature as well, and that's represented by a practical looking bionic arm with which he grips his sword. Rules wise, I'm sure it goes without saying that he's going to be a beast in close combat, he's really none too bad at the moment, he costs 155 points, and if he gets the plus 1 wound and plus 1 attack for becoming Primaris, he'll be up to 7 wounds and 6 attacks at base, and currently his Sword of the High Marshals gives him a strength plus 2, AP minus 3 and damage 2, and plus D3 attacks on the charge. If all that remains the same, he's going to be absolutely crazy in combat, averaging 9 attacks on the first round of combat with Shock Assault. I'm sure he'll have all the normal Chapter Master buffs, making one unit have 4 rerolls. I think maybe it might be a bit more questionable though whether he's going to keep his Crusade of Wrath rule, the one where he gives plus one strength to nearby units. Hopefully that does stay, that's really quite a powerful reason to include him as a buffing character. Anyway though, looks like a really nice new sculpt, and I'm sure plenty of Black Templar players will be looking to pick him up. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if there's any cool details on the miniatures or implications of the changes that I might have missed. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly try and keep on top of any new Black Templar releases, and I'll review the codex in full once it's out for a bit of a rules review. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention one way in which you can support it, which is my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. Element Games is a UK-based discount retailer, which gives you 10-20% to off Games Workshop's miniatures, so if you were thinking about picking up some miniatures in the near future, maybe feel free to check them out. If you buy anything after clicking the link, a small amount goes to help support All Specs Tactics, it doesn't cost you any extra at all when you buy, but a small amount goes to help support the channel on each purchase made. Can just be something to think about if you're interested, and there's also an Amazon link down there for people in the USA and Canada, which works fairly similarly. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.